Now, I'd like to speak to the guy who put this together. If you scroll through the comments on any margin call video, you'll see comments like these. Margin call script is carefully crafted with layered storytelling and clear characters. In my previous videos, I showed pictures from margin call script, and those weren't things I typed up. Margin call script is available on a few websites. I'll put a link in the description. The script appears to be the version submitted for the Oscars. It was nominated for Best Original Screenplay. It's full of fun details. For example, John Told was supposed to be bald. Sarah dated a very tall man. Jared oversees 25,000 employees. The cut content has a lot more information about Sam. Will and Seth also have more lines together. It's not clear how much of the cut content was actually filmed or edited out of the script before shooting. As I read through the script, I noticed two small changes from the script to the final film that had a big impact on Margin Call. So in this video, we'll be looking at how these two small changes individually and collectively impacted the final film. Now, we can't know how the film would have turned out with these things included, so as Peter says, Well, that's where it becomes a projection. It's all just numbers. Have you ever noticed that Margin Call is reserved with numbers? It's one of the first things I noticed when I watched it. In the script, though, there were more numbers. Specifically, one number. 1.2 trillion. Let's see where it pops up. In the first meeting scene, Peter says that their exposure is at 1.2 trillion. Jared then asks Sam how long it would take to clear the 1.2 trillion from their books. Later, in the senior partners meeting, Peter tells John that the risk profile is at 1.2 trillion. And when John says, I'll have to pay. Sam says, almost a trillion bucks of paper. While not stated, there's another reference to the number. When Sam is looking at the model, the script says he sees a number followed by a bunch of zeros. To me, it looks like the screen would be visible. So, what does cutting this number do to the film? It does two things. First, the script feels clunky, slow, and repetitive with this number included. There are lines surrounding this number that have to set it up. By removing it, the scenes feel more concise, and certain lines have more punch. For example, in the script, Peter tells John that the risk profile is at 1.2 trillion. On the next page, Peter says, If those assets decrease by just 25% and remain on our books, that loss would be greater than the current market capitalization of this entire company. These feel like two pieces of similar information. By cutting out the number, the market capitalization line feels much heavier. Second, in A.O. Scott's review of Margin Call, he said it was a thriller and also a horror movie. Margin Call takes a nod from a horror movie convention, referred to as Don't Show the Monster or Monster Delay. It's the idea that a film should avoid showing the monster for as long as possible. The monster here is the 1.2 trillion or the projected losses. The film never says the number. By never showing the monster, the film has the audience focus on the character's stress and their reactions. Eric Dale. In this movie, everyone is looking for Eric Dale. Eric Dale? May I speak with Eric? Where's Eric Dale? Where's Eric Dale? Carmelo. Yes. Get me Eric Dale here by 6.30. In the script, we get two additional lines about Eric. As the first meeting scene ends, Jared says they need to find Eric because he wants to put a knife in their backs, and he doesn't know that he has the knife. And as the senior partner's meeting ends, after Jared says, We have been uh, trying to locate him. John says, So he is just out there with this information? So with these lines removed, 
The reasons to find Eric Dale are implied, but not said. I'll talk more about that in part three. There's also an unintended consequence here. For those who saw the senior partners meeting first, Eric Dale is a mystery. Who is he? Why isn't he there? John's cut line implies potential nefarious intentions. But with the line removed, there is a greater mystery around Eric Dale's absence. For me, at least. I think this made me more interested in watching the full movie. We just react. So what do these two changes combined, removing a number and lines about Eric, do to the final film? There's a recurring theme in Margin Call about reactions. Each character reacts to Peter's discovery and the fire sale differently. John tells Sam, We just react. These two changes in the script bolster this recurring theme. It's a powerful way to engage the audience, and it grounds the film. When Sam sees the number, we don't see what he's looking at. We just see his reaction. This is one of the few times, if not the only time, we see Sam panic. His reaction is more important than the number, and it tells us more about his character. When Jared says, We have been uh, trying to locate him. John gives Jared and Sarah this look. If the original line was included, this moment would be about Eric and the danger he poses. Instead, it becomes about John's frustration with Jared and Sarah. We can see in his look that he thinks they are incompetent. Along with reaction, these changes to the script create an environment where things are implied, but never said. No one wants to show their full hand. With the 1.2 trillion removed, the film shifts to no character wanting to admit how severe the projected losses are. It's too terrifying. Peter, in the script, offers up the numbers freely, but in the film, he seems more cautious. Confident in his conclusion, but remembering that Eric told him to be careful. Jared doesn't want to say the number either, as he's in line to take the blame for it. With the lines about Eric Dale removed, no one explicitly says why they want to find him. It's all implied. Eric tells Sarah, I could come back here and make uh, 176000 $471 an hour to sit quietly in this room. The audience can fill in the blank why he's sitting there until the end of the day. By relying on implication, the film keeps the audience engaged as they keep looking for additional pieces of information. It also enhances the rewatch value of the film, as earlier lines have a deeper meaning on a second viewing. In his review of the film, A.O. Scott said J.C. Shandor can imply far more than he shows, and he orchestrates a complex drama out of whispers and glances. By removing $1.2 trillion from the script and cutting lines about Eric, J.C. Shandor achieved that effect. Focusing on the character's reactions and implications allows room for the audience's imagination. These changes allowed a good script to become a great movie. That wraps up my look at Margin Call script. What's your favorite line from Margin Call? Drop a comment down below. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.